Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I am super excited because I'm going to show you how to install Pop! OS on your Raspberry Pi 4 or your Raspberry Pi 400. Now I would personally recommend using some type of SSD for this, either a 2.5 or an NVMe drive just to make everything a bit quicker. But if all you have is a micro SD card, we can do that and I'm going to show you how to install it. Now, if you're not familiar with Pop! OS, this is based on Ubuntu, and it's actually one of my favorite distros for lower-end x86-based laptops, and one of my main laptops that I use as a carry-around has Pop! OS installed. It's powered by a very low-end Intel Celeron 4100 CPU, and it handles this distribution really well. But now we have the ability to install this on a Raspberry Pi or Pi 400, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to do it. Before we get started here, I do want to mention that this is a beta for Pop! OS. This is 20.10. But I've used it for the past few days. I haven't run into any issues with it. It actually functions really well on the Pi. Now, in order to get this up and running, all you're really going to need is a Raspberry Pi 4. I would highly recommend using at least a 4 gigabyte model. But if all you have is a 2 gigabyte model, that'll definitely get you by. And some type of storage device. I would recommend using something like an external SSD, but an SD card also works. Keep in mind, it will be a bit slower than an SSD or an NVMe drive. But this will definitely give you a good idea if this is some kind of distro you want to be running on your Raspberry Pi. So with Pop! OS, they offer something called the Pop! Shop that comes pre-installed, and it just easily allows you to install different applications. We can go in there and download RetroArch, you can download some games, some development tools, and it just makes it a really easy experience to get new applications on your Pi. I was able to go through and install a few different applications. Mainly, I wanted to see some emulation, so I went through and I installed RetroArch from the Pop Shop. It does boot right up. It's the ARM version of RetroArch because we're running an ARM distro here of Pop OS. And when it comes to video playback, this is basically on par with Raspberry Pi OS. It actually does a pretty decent job with 720p streaming from YouTube. But the one thing I really love about Pop! OS, especially on the Raspberry Pi, is the user interface. I'm a big fan of this, and if you're interested in getting this installed on your Raspberry Pi 4 or Pi 400, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Okay, so this process is really simple. It's basically just like flashing any other image for your Raspberry Pi 4 or your Pi 400. First things first, I've got my micro SD card inserted into my PC. It's right here. It's just a little 32 gigabyte card. I would highly recommend using an SSD for this, be it a 2.5 inch or an NVMe. It's just going to be a lot quicker. But if you're just working with an SD card, it's totally possible. And that's what we're going to do in this video. So I've got my SD card right here. It's ready to go. It's already cleared out. All links for everything mentioned in this video are in the description. The very first thing we need to do is download an application that will allow us to flash this image to our micro SD card. I've personally been using the Raspberry Pi Imager since it was released, but you can also use Etcher and there's a few others on the market. But we're just going to go with the Raspberry Pi Imager. This will work for Windows, Mac, or Linux. I'm going to go with the Windows version. Let's go ahead and install it real quick. And we don't need to run it just yet. The next thing we need to download is the Pop! OS image. There's a GitHub link in the description. This is for beta testing, but I've personally had really good luck with it. This isn't something that I would keep using after the official release is out, but uh, you can definitely try it out right now. And when the official release comes, this might not be able to be upgraded, so you will have to do a fresh install. But it's great to see if this is something you want to use. Read through everything here, and we're going to grab the Experimental Raspberry Pi or Pi 400 image. So we're going to download the image. Mine's already downloaded. And for some reason, when I'm using Windows 10 and Edge, it gives me this warning here. I can just go to Keep, and it'll download for me. But like I mentioned, I've already downloaded it. It's in my Downloads folder here, and it's about 2.4 gigabytes. We're going to go ahead and leave this zip. This is the Pop! OS 21.10 image for the Raspberry Pi. So now that we have Pi Imager installed and we have Pop! OS downloaded, let's go ahead and flash it to that SD card. We're going to launch the Pi Imager, and from here we're going to choose our OS. There's a long list, but we want to go down to Custom. We're going to navigate to where we downloaded that Pop! OS image. Mine's in my Downloads folder. We're going to choose this. Storage device is going to be that micro SD card, but if you're using an SSD, it'll also be listed here. Just triple check and make sure you're flashing to the correct drive. Mine's drive F, and I know it's a 32 gigabyte card. So we've got the card selected and the image selected. We're going to go ahead and write it. Yes. And this could take a little while depending on how fast your card is. But what this is going to do is just write that image to the SD card. Then it's going to go through a little bit of a verification process. And once this is done, we're actually ready to move over to the Raspberry Pi with that micro SD card or SSD. 
Okay, so now that the Raspberry Pi imager is finished, we'll just hit continue. And now we can move over to our Raspberry Pi or Pi 400. It really depends on what you want to use here. Okay, so I've got my Raspberry Pi plugged into HDMI. I've also got a mouse and keyboard. I'll just put that SD card right in here, the one that we just flashed, and plug the power in. First boot is going to be a lot longer than any other boot because it does need to get those files situated. But just give it a little time to finish up. Once this is finished booting, it's going to bring us into kind of a little walkthrough. And this is only on the first boot. We do need to set up our password and username plus our location. And once we're finished booting up, you're going to be presented with a screen that looks like this. It's an easy walkthrough, and what I'm going to do now is just move in a bit closer to the screen so we can get a better look at everything. So in the top left-hand corner of our little window here, we're just going to choose Next. We're going to choose our language. I'm going with English. It'll also prompt us to connect to our Wi-Fi network. Now we need to choose our location. I'm going to go with New York. This is our time zone. We'll also have to set up a username and create a password for Pop! OS. And once we're finished with that, we're ready to use Pop! OS. We're still going to get one little window that pops up once everything's ready to go. But this just really gives us our initial customization of the operating system. We can go with no dock, all the way across the bottom border dock, or we can go with more of a Mac OS look. Personally, this is the one I choose. A couple more options here. Just go ahead and read through everything. It gives you an idea of how to use gestures on your trackpad. And we can go with a light theme or a dark theme. I personally like the dark theme, but you might want to go with that light, so we do have the option to use it. And once that's done, we are now officially ready to use Pop! OS on our Raspberry Pi or our Raspberry Pi 400. It's a very user-friendly operating system, and that's one of the main reasons I personally like using it. Everything's really self-explanatory. We do have a lot of customization options, but this is the way it looks right out of the box with the dock style that I chose at the bottom here and the dark theme. Like I mentioned, we do have the Pop Shop. We can go ahead and launch it from that dock here, and it just gives us a bunch of different applications that we're able to install super easily. We don't have to use Terminal to install any of these applications, which makes it really easy for a new user coming over to Linux from something like Windows or Mac OS. LibreOffice is also pre-installed. We have our task manager here. There's a USB flasher. We have a disk manager. Everything you really need with a nice little operating system is already pre-installed here. But once you boot this up for the first time, I would highly recommend updating it. So in order to get this update going, we're going to launch Terminal. It's right on that menu. And from here, the first thing we're going to type in is sudo apt update. We're going to press enter. It's going to ask us for the password we created when we set up Pop! OS. This is just going to kind of give us a list of all the updates that we have going on. This one's already been updated, so I'll have zero updates. But the next thing we need to do is sudo apt upgrade. This could take a little while depending on your internet connection and what kind of storage device you're using. But if you just installed this for the first time, it will prompt you to upgrade. You'll have to press Y on your keyboard and enter and just let it finish. But yeah, overall, I've had a really good experience with Pop! OS on the Raspberry Pi. I'm actually really glad to see this because like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this is one of my favorite operating systems for lower end x86 platforms. One of my main carry or travel around laptops was a $100 laptop that I bought two years ago on Black Friday. It can hardly get out of its own way when it's running Windows 10, but once I installed Pop! OS on it, it definitely made that a very usable little option. But yeah, if you're interested in trying this out on your Raspberry Pi 4 or your Raspberry Pi 400, all links for everything I mentioned are in the description. And definitely keep an eye out for the official release. I'll be doing another video. It probably won't be an install video, but more of an overview video with all the new features. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.